Welcome to Good News, Good Life. I am your host, Anthony Benitez, coming to you guys from Southern California. I want to give a warm welcome to all of our lovely listeners all around the world, starting in Singapore, all the way to Russia, down to South America, Central America, all the way up north to Canada. Man, welcome. Today's going to be a great episode. I am very excited, honored to be here, and I just want to get into it. First of all, before we begin, there is so much momentum in our ministry. I am holding back to reveal unto you, my listener, what is about to happen in our ministry and everything that is in the works. We have projects that are at 50% fulfilled. We have books coming out. We have uh, live streams maybe coming out, Sunday services. We have lots of good, good teachings coming out. I do want to give you this little nugget or this disclosure in YouTube or on YouTube, I should say. We are doing uh, short teachings. You're going to find a new playlist very soon and it's going to be short teachings. It's going to be anywhere from two minutes to five minutes. I did that on purpose. And it's going to address very simple but profound questions that are going to radically transform your understanding. And ultimately, if your understanding is transformed, guess what? Your life is transformed. So we did our first one we filmed last week. Looks pristine. Looks regal, looks amazing, and I wanted it done properly for you guys to behold. Um, And it's called, What is Grace? We are explaining the simplicity of what is grace. And going forward, we're going to be doing different questions to be answered, such as, what is Paul's thorn in this flesh? Very simple but profound questions like, what is faith? What is a Christian? (laughs) And what is the gospel? What is the purpose of the gospel? What is righteousness by faith? What is the purpose of the law? What is the new covenant all about? It's going to be amazing. Like I'm I'm getting very energized just thinking about it. So all these questions that I just uh, said, we're going to have a specific playlist for short teachings on YouTube addressing these questions. We did our very first one, like I mentioned, like I was alluding to, called What is Grace? It should be out very soon. If not, maybe out, maybe not, might not be out depending on when this specific episode is published. But it looks pristine. It looks great. I really want you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have not yet subscribed, I really want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. We are doing a lot of changes. We're releasing a lot of content. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing time. I really want you guys to go to our YouTube channel. It is, let me pull this up one second. You go to YouTube and you literally click on, or you can search for my name, Anthony Benitez or Benitez. But you can simply put at truth underscore M-I-N. At truth underscore M-I-N. I N. Go check it out. I'm very excited. And there's going to be so much more being released. However, um, for now, I really want you to stay plugged in. Hit the notification bell. Why? Because when we release content, it will notify you, henceforth the name, and let you know, hey, we just released a brand new video. Hey, we just released a new promo video about the new books. So you really want to stay plugged in. Go to at truth underscore M-I-N or you can search for my name, Anthony Benitez. I don't know how many Anthony Benitez there is in the world, but truth underscore M-I-N will get you there accurately. So that was some of the announcements and that was one out of like 10 things that are going on. Very exciting. So let's get into today's teaching, shall we? I'm very excited to announce a brand new series 
we are doing called the authority of the believer. The authority of the believer. This has been on my heart for quite some time. And this morning, as I was driving back from the gym, I was driving, I was listening to my pastor, Joseph Prince, and he was, he barely, he didn't teach on it, but he touched on it. He touched on it out of everything, and, and he's, he never brings it up that often. And out of all the teachings, out of everything that he happens to say, he said it for like a minute. And he says some other things that I've been teaching my teen mom, and it was like, boom, confirmation. But even before that, this series has been burning in my soul. Why? Because we must understand, by the blood of Jesus, listener, I will begin to teach now. You must understand that by the blood of Jesus, believer, you and I have been given authority. We have been made something. According to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, let's go to that. Let's begin there. We must understand the finished work of the cross of Christ. The only reason... The only, way, the only way you and I ever have authority is because of Jesus. That is called grace. Because of what He, Jesus, has done. We have been blessed, privileged with this authority. The authority of the believer. There is no other way to it. This is the foundation. The beginning is that we must understand, why do I have this authority? For instance... We have a lot of people who are in law enforcement that listen to us and follow us. We have a lot of people who are military veterans. I salute you. I respect you. I honor you. I am very excited in the near future to work with you guys. You guys are to be honored. You guys are to be blessed financially, given abundance of resources. I was just talking to Pastor Declan about this, how in the not so distant future, I want to be able to bless our local law enforcement community here financially and endorse them and sponsor them. But for example, let's say you are getting into the law enforcement. You go to you go to you go to the police academy. You go to the police academy for 6 weeks whatever it may be. You train, you train, you train, you graduate 2 3 months afterwards. You get a badge and you have been given authority, backed by who? By the LAPD, by the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, by the New York PD, NYPD, by et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Correct? So you go, you train, you pass all the PT, the physical training test, you pass all the written exams, the oral exams, you pass all the physical exams, and you made it through, and now you have graduated from the police academy, and you've been given this authority, this badge, backed by the LAPD or whichever local law enforcement office in which you graduated from, correct? As a believer... The only reason why we have authority is not because we go through a training or we are good enough to receive authority over devils, sickness, disease, poverty, anything that we see that is of darkness. Our first understanding for the authority of the believer is that there is a beautiful person by the name of Jesus and he For instance, he went through the training. He went through the law enforcement training. He took your written exam. He took your oral exam. He passed all the physical training exams. He made it through training. He made it through the police academy on your behalf as your substitute. He graduated, passed with flying colors, was given a badge. And guess what? He... Jesus has now given you his badge, his authority. 
whatever authority the Lord Jesus has, he now has given it to you. That's called grace. Grace is unworked for favor, undeserved. In other words, it's not by works. Where is that in the Bible? Romans chapter 11, verse 6, boldly declares, if it's by grace, it's not of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Very simple. So the authority that we have is first and foremost because of Jesus and what he has done, the price that he has paid to give us this authority. So the authority that you have, believer, and you have authority, you have been given this privilege as a gift, not based on merit, not based on works, not based on anything you have done, not because you've prayed long enough, now you have more authority. No, no, no. Not because you fasted, now you have more authority. No, no, absolutely not. The reason why you and I have authority is because of Jesus Christ. He finished the race, completed the exam, passed the exam with flying colors at that. It has given you and I this authority, which we declare the authority of the believer. Because many, many, many times Christians, our brothers and sisters in Christ, have this misconception that I must work for it. If I want more authority, if I want more spiritual power, then I must pray a specific time. I must fast a specific time. Now, am I against fasting? No, but I don't see Paul teach on fasting quite often. But if you want to fast, that's fine. Some people need to fast just because they're overweight. Bless God. But it's not according to fasting. It's not according to how much you pray. Am I against praying? No, I pray as a disclosure, on a daily basis, on a daily basis for quite some time in the spirit, in tongues. But is that going to give me more authority? No. Your authority has been given to you as a gift by grace. And the authority comes into manifestation by understanding. And this is what I endeavor to do in this series. Today, I'm going to basically touch on this introduction, and I will take a step-by-step. Step. I'm, I'm probably going to keep this one relatively short. But we must first understand that we have this authority. And why do we have this authority? Well, because of the cross of Christ, because of what Jesus has done, because we are in Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ, Anthony? To be in Christ is simply what First John Chapter 4 says, as he is, so are we in this world. Colossians says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you shall appear with him in glory. Think about that. The Bible says Christ is your life. The Bible says, as he is, so are you in this world. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says this, for the two shall be one. That's in Ephesians, right? But listen to this. For he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. What does it mean to be in Christ? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. For he that is joined to the Lord shall be one spirit with him. Or he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. That's singular. That means... It's one spirit, one union, one flesh, like a husband and a wife. As he is, so are we in this world. That is what it means to be in Christ. Christ is your identity. Colossians, the Bible says, when Christ, who is our life, Christ is our life. Christ is our identity. As he is, so are we in this world. This authority that we have been given is because of the blood of Jesus. Is because when Jesus was on that cross, 
Here I go preaching the cross once more. When Jesus Christ hung on that cross, at that moment, you and I were placed in him. Jesus died for the world. But Jesus also died as you. This takes understanding and wisdom, which I pray the Lord gives you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus not only died for the world, but Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, died as you. On that cross, you are not looking at a martyr. On the cross, you are looking at yourself. Because you died in him. The Bible says we died in him. We were buried with him. We were resurrected with him. This is in Ephesians. So when you look at the cross, you are not looking at a man, a martyr, who just died for the world. He did. He did. But when you look at the cross, you're looking at yourself. You were placed in Christ. See, there's facets to it. Did Jesus die for the world? Of course. But that's that, That's a very shallow understanding. Many, the, the entire world, even unbelievers, know that. I, I remember years ago, I was watching this, this ridiculously stupid, for lack of a better word, ridiculously stupid movie with uh, an actor, which I don't care to mention. And they were making fun of something. And, I, and, and he said, well, Jesus died for sins for us. This is an unbeliever. The world understands. I believe everybody understands that Jesus died for everybody's sin. I remember, I want to give you this quick story because it'll help you. Three years ago, I had a team uh, in my ministry. And we were uh, basically focused on outreach. I'm an evangelist by by nature, I'm an evangelist in many other callings, but my heart is for the world. So we went feeding people. We were um, helping people, feeding people, clothing people, preaching the gospel to people in Los Angeles. This was before I moved out to the East Coast. And I remember going to this tent city where these guys were, were living out of tents, obviously. And they were doing drugs. And I was talking to this guy who was shirtless. Obviously, you know, he was strung out on something. No judgment. I'm just telling you, I'm painting a picture for you of what was going on. And I'm talking to him, and then I asked him, do you know why Jesus came to the world? And this guy gave me the entire gospel, probably better than many, many believers today. He said, yeah, well, you know, we couldn't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We're fallen. There's no strength in us. So Jesus came. He died for the entire world's sins. Because we couldn't save ourselves. He became our sin sacrifice. And I was like, wow, that's great. Do you believe? He said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so it, Jesus died for the world. That's one facet. But Jesus died as you. On the cross, according to Ephesians chapter 2, we died with him. We were buried with him. And we were resurrected with him. So when we died, what, what, what happened on the cross? That old creation... I'm trying to th pause here and see how deep I want to go today. The old creation in Adam died on that cross. That old creation that, that, you, that you and I really hate, the old flesh, the old man that gives us problems left and right, that, that is always fearful, can never believe, is always paranoid, is always in unbelief, and many, many other dark things. That old man was pegged to the cross. Where? In Christ. On the cross. The old creation passed away. On the cross. Why? Because you and I were in Christ on the cross. And when the judgment of God was poured out. And the full judgment of God was poured out on the cross of Christ. On the body of Jesus Christ as the sin offering. We were in him. So none of our sins escaped. None of our sins escaped. I said, none of our sins escaped. They were all fully punished. Where? On the body of Jesus Christ. We were in him. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 says. And we died with him. 
and who were buried with him. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2. And we were resurrected with him. But hold on. When we resurrected, question to you, listener, did we resurrect as the same old creation? Just kind of power washed, clean? No, 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 no. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, the old creation. And behold, all things have become new. That's called the new creation. Another word for creation in the Greek is a human species that never existed before. A whole new species. So when you look at the world today, there is the old creation that by default is still hanging out. Why? Because they're in unbelief. Talking about unbelievers. But there's a new creation. Us as Christians. Christians, Christians, we are a new creation. It's not like we are still the same old sinner and we have the old nature and we have the old man. No, the old nature and the old man was pegged inside the body of Jesus Christ on the cross and died on the cross. We died. That's what the Bible says. We died with him. We were buried with him. And when we resurrected with Christ, we resurrected as a new creation, a whole new species that never ever existed before, a new creation in Adam, a new creation no longer in Adam, I should say, because the old creation was in Adam, but the new creation is in Christ. This is what it means to be in Christ. I'm teaching today. This is what it means to be in Christ, is that we are a new creation. We are no longer in Adam. We do not have the sinful nature anymore. The old man was crucified. That's why the Bible says, St. Paul, written by the Holy Spirit to the church at Galatia, the Bible says, I was crucified with Christ. You and I were crucified. Where? On the cross. The old nature died and passed away. Behold, all things have now become new. So we are a new creation. We are in Christ. Our identity is no longer tied to our family, to our familial ties, our relatives. No, 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 no. We are now a part of the royal blood, the royal bloodline that has become kings and priests. And this is where the authority lies. Because the old nature, the old creation had no authority. The old creation was actually in complete bondage. Was a slave to sin. In bondage. However, because we are a new creation in Christ. Washed by the blood of Christ. Rebirth. The Bible says, the epistle written by St. Peter. The Bible says, that we have been re-begotten. Begotten means rebirth, in essence, by the word of God. We are, we are a new species. We're not, this is not religion. We're not playing religious games here. We're talking about reality. As a new species, we have authority. So do you see why I said that the authority of the believer must start at this understanding that there is nothing that we did to receive it. We receive this authority by default because we are in Christ. As a new creation, we have been made kings and priests, and we have royal blood running through our lines. We are no longer affiliated with our old familiar ties. That's why Jesus said, I did not, bring, I did not come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword, to divide a family. What does that mean? That's kind of harsh. Well, because let's say if you're born again and your wife isn't or she's just playing religious games, there's going to be division because now you ha it's a, there's a new creation and an old creation in the same household. There's in Adam who is full of death, unbelief, rebellion, 
And there's in Christ, you as the believer who is full of faith, life, and blessedness. There, there's going to be a division there. If your family, if your mom and dad are not saved, but you get saved by the grace of God, guess what? You are a new creation. You are no longer in Adam, the cursed bloodline that fell in the Garden of Eden. You are in Christ, but they are not. They are still, by default of unbelief, they are still in Adam. So there will be a divisiveness there by default. But as the new creation, because you are born again, that's what it means to be born again. We're not refurbished. We're born again. And because we're born again, this is what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the firstborn of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us or loosed us from our sins in his own blood, verse 6, and has made us has made has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen as a believer this is not religion you are a new creation as a new creation you have been born a king and a priest and what does that mean well I'll get into it in the next episode. Again, this is the introduction. But a very good introduction because we must first look to the cross and realize that the authority begins because of what Jesus has done on the cross. Now that he has completed it, the Christian walk is not to do more. The Christian walk is to understand more. Understand what, Anthony? Understand what has been accomplished on your behalf. By who? By Jesus Christ. So we just read in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, that he has loosed us from our sins with his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Have you guys ever seen an old world type of movie where you see kings Pastor Declan and I were just watching a movie the other day, and it's about some old emperors in France, and we were watching them go to war and how they conducted themselves, and I'm watching this guy at war, the emperor, the king. King means emperor. I'm watching the king of France as they're at war, and he has his servants over him and the bible says that angels are servants or ministers sent to help us who have received salvation hebrews chapter 1 and this king of france they asked him should we begin to fire our cannons at the enemy all it took was a little nod from the king as a command and then all of a sudden, the entire military and army began to fire and began to make progress and advance and mobilize against the enemy. All it took was one little nod. But that nod came from a king. And a king has authority. That is why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, where the word of a king is, there is power. Jesus said when he resurrected unto us, he said, all authority has been given unto me. So now you go. So what does that mean? Because we are in him and he has been given all authority on earth and in heaven, we have that same authority. What type of authority? All authority on heaven. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go ye therefore. In other words, because we are in Christ, because Jesus has received all authority in heaven and on earth, 
we too have received that same exact identical authority. That is why the Lord said, go ye therefore. And wherever you go, you will cast out devils. You will heal the sick. You will trample on scorpions and snakes. This authority has been given to us first and foremost because of another. His name is Jesus. And we have been made kings and priests. And where the word of a king is, there is power. We have dominion. We have authority. We have the authority of the believer. And I want to dig a little deeper in the next episode. But I believe this is a perfect introduction. Because we must first understand the only reason why we have authority is why? Because of the cross of Jesus Christ. The finished work of the cross of Christ is what has gifted us this authority by grace. We have it. Now, the difference between victory and defeat in a believer's life is a believer who understands his authority. And furthermore, a deeper step is a believer who exercises his authority. It's, it's the authority of the believer that has been gifted by Jesus. One more time. It's the authority of the believer that has been gifted by the Lord Jesus. Why? Because of the cross of Christ. That is why the Lord said after he resurrected, all authority in heaven and on earth has been gifted, has been given to me. Go ye therefore, because you and I are one. As he is, so are we in this world. And if I, this is what the Lord is saying, if I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, that means you too have that same authority. That Wherever you go, you are the principality. Wherever you go, you are the one who has the dominion, the authority. And this is something that is needed. Because once more, the difference between victory and defeat in a believer's life is twofold. Number one, a believer must understand by the cross of Christ that we have been made kings and priests. And we have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Yes. Dominion, authority. These are phenomenal traits to hone in and understand. So we must first understand that. The second fold is that you must exercise that. If you see, if you see a, a cold, any type of sickness trying to creep in and touch your, your child, what are you going to do? You have been given authority. You are the one in charge. You lay your hands on your child and you rebuke that sickness. You take charge because wherever you go, you are the principality over that region. You are in charge. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, and I end with this, that when God resurrected Jesus Christ, once again, we resurrected with him. We are in him. So whatever I'm talking about Jesus, that has happened to you as well. So picture this, Ephesians chapter 1, the Bible says that God, with his glory, resurrected Christ from the dead. And he began to ascend. He ascended from the pit of hell to the first heaven, where we see now. He ascended to the second heaven. But he didn't stop. Then he finally ascended to the third heaven, the highest of all authority. Then God made Jesus to sit down at his right hand on the throne. Sit down, the Bible says in Psalm, until I make your enemies my footstool. The Lord told Jesus. And he's telling you the same exact thing. So that is what the Bible says that when he resurrected Christ from the dead, he said he has given him the name that is above every name, the name that is higher than any principality, any might, any dominion, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he has 
put everything under the feet of Jesus. And as he is, so are you in this world. Everything has been brought under the feet of Jesus. And you are in Christ. So that means that you have authority on earth. You are not without power. And when you and I begin to understand that, and furthermore, when we begin to exercise the, this authority and dominion that we have been given, that is when we will begin to live and see tangible results in our life, which is what every single believer wants. Amen. So I want to end it here, friend. And I believe this was a great introduction to begin this series. I will continue to teach on this authority that we have been given in many different facets. And I want you to stay plugged in and understand, first and foremost, that it, it is all because of another. His name is Jesus. It is all because of the cross of Christ that we have been given this authority. We have it. You don't need to fast more or pray more to, have, to get more authority. What you need to do is sit down and listen and be taught the word of God. Far too many churches don't do any teaching. And I'm not knocking the church. I'm here for the church. But far too many churches don't do any teaching. They just preach, preach, preach. Hoorah, hoorah, hoorah. It's like a pep rally. Believers do not need to be pep rallied up. Believers need to be taught what Jesus has finished on the cross. That is when you will see tangible results in your life. When you and I understand the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ, we will begin to walk into our possession. Because when we understand, then we can have faith for that. And we, on this side of heaven, receive everything by faith. It has been finished. Everything has been finished. Everything has been finished. As a believer, our responsibility is, is to find out what has been finished. Find out. That's why I preach Christ crucified. I tell you what the Lord Jesus has done on your behalf. You find out. You begin to believe for it. Not work for it, but believe the truth, which is the finished work of the cross of Christ. And and, and then when, when that happens, friend, you and I will begin to receive tangible results in our life tangible results in our life and that is what everybody everybody wants everybody wants tangible results in their life even unbelievers so let us continue to learn about the finished work of the cross on the cross and because of the cross we have been received we have been given this authority because of the cross of christ we have been given this authority the authority of the believer which was given to us as a gift of grace by the Lord Jesus. I gave this illustration that when you pass the police academy and you've been given that authoritative badge, let's say you go to LAPD. Well, all of LAPD is backing you up. Well, guess what? Jesus is God in the flesh. And the authority that you have is the authority that he now has. So he is your backing. All of heaven, the entire might of God, heaven, at your word is backing up what you say because you have been given this authority. And what an honor and privilege it is to have received it. Amen. So friend, I want to encourage you to continue to stay plugged in for this series. And I want to ask you for this favor. Share this episode with three people. Share this episode specifically. I came out of the Word of Faith denomination, which I love. I love the Word of Faith folks. The folks are, are amazing people. I want you to give me at least three people to chime into this new series. The Authority of the Believer. Send it. It's very simple. You go to the podcast, copy it, copy the link, and send it to three people. Three people who are in the Word of Faith denomination. Three people who, who, in general, any denomination, to be honest with you. 
But I have a heart for those who are in the word of faith. I love them so much. And I want them to understand what has happened on the cross and the authority that they have been given by the Lord Jesus. So do me this favor and share this episode with at least three people. I greatly appreciate it. And I do want to encourage you to give into this ministry. Go to our website. Go to... uh, I was going to give you the new website, but it's almost done. But go to Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. The easiest way, and, and to be honest with you, there's a lot of people. There's been like a influx of new monthly, like on a, on a loyal monthly basis. We have a lot of people. For instance, I don't know how people found out of us in Singapore and China and Russia, but there's a quite a substantial amount of people in different countries that I've never been to that are giving into this ministry on a monthly, weekly basis. You can give at on Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, all these wonderful modern avenues that we have. Cash App, I believe, is the easiest. That's the one that I see a lot of people give on is Cash App. It's very, very simple. I personally use it. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. It's a very, very easy way. It's Truth Ministries. CH at Cash Shop. That is where you can give is Truth Ministry CH. Truth Ministry CH on Cash Shop. And that is the easiest way where you can give. And I'm telling you, you will join the hundreds of people who are a part of the Truth family and have been plugged in, have been transformed, have been blessed, has have been prospered because of the cross of Christ. Because they understood and have been listening to the finished work of the cross of Jesus. So once again, I am Anthony Benitez. It's been an honor, a privilege, a pleasure, truly, to have expounded the word of Christ onto you. Stay plugged in for the next part in this series. I am very excited. And until then, I will see you guys. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode I hope you're encouraged by it. If you believe in what we're doing and want to help us continue spreading the word about our gracious and loving Savior, consider supporting our podcast. Your contribution, whether it's a one-time gift or becoming a monthly partner, goes directly towards our media and our video production efforts. Together, we can continue to share the good news to those that need it the most. Visit our website to give today. And thank you for your generosity.